Hello, and welcome to this short video focusing on the connectivity of our Sirius Act pilot devices to the IO-Link technology. My name is John Burns, an application consultant for the Electrical Products Group here at Siemens. We're going to go over two different examples of our connectivity. The first being a totally custom and configurable push-button station that can reside directly out on the machine. The black suitcase module here is a communication module for the IO-Link technology. So a three-wire connection going from a connector on the side of this suitcase up to this M12 connection will then lead back out to, say, an, an IO-Link master for communication. The system itself, again, you have the communication module not only is it connecting to IO-Link, but on that same connector now, you'll hardwire to standard contact blocks and LEDs for your operators on the enclosure. Again, the system is fully configurable. You can select any of your standard pilot devices, customize your inscriptions, and it's configurable. This particular suitcase module will support eight IO signals, and in the configuration tool within the portal software, you can decide on those eight signals, are they input or output, as long as the total comes up to eight. The enclosures also, once you configure them, a unique part number is assigned to that configuration so that somewhere down the road, if a replacement unit is needed, anywhere in the world, you place an order for that part number, that unit will come in identical to the original one, including all the inscriptions and operation. The second example we're going to talk about is now Sirius Act pilot devices that are mounted on a front panel. Now these devices, again, use the standard operators, standard holders, standard contact block, but now the interface module for the first operator will mount between those two contact blocks. But like the enclosure, you'll wire your three-wire I.O. link connection to this suitcase connector. And then from the other connector, we'll wire out to your adjacent operators. Similar to the enclosure, this module is also, say, for eight I.O. points. So you can configure your input and output configuration based on the type of operators you have on your front panel. So this whole system configures very easy in our portal software. So now we'll go ahead and show you just how easy that is. So here we are in the portal software. I've gone ahead and created a new project. So let's go and jump into project view. Now in here, I've also created a CPU system. So if I go to devices and networks, you'll see it's one of our ET200 SP form factor uh, CPUs. And if I expand this on the left column, you'll see it's all the common folders for all of our PLCs. So if I come in here and look at the device configuration for the CPU, I've also added an IO-Link master to the rack. The way I did that was just like adding any other uh, module into the system. I came over here to communication modules, IO-Link master, and got to the part number and was able to drop it into the configuration. Once I did, if you look, I've already assigned IO addresses starting at uh, bit zero for the input and bit zero for the output. And it was a field size of 32 bytes in, 32 bytes out that got reserved. If you know your IO link devices won't consume that many bytes, you can uh, reserve less uh, IO space. Uh, from this, I just usually take the de facto 32 and 32 uh, for my systems. Now, once you have that IO-Link master uh, inserted into your rack, you want to go ahead now, because now the, say, the CPU will see the master, but now you have to configure the master to go see the IO-Link devices. And we do that using a tool called a PCT tool or port configuration tool. And here we can start that tool. If this link is not active, that means the port configuration tool has not been loaded onto your laptop. It's a free download from our service and support website. 
Uh, once it's downloaded, it integrates itself into the portal software. So I'm going to go ahead and start that tool. Now, in my case, I don't have a real rack that I want to connect to online. So I'm just going to click cancel and this will open up an offline view of my IO Link Master. So I've gone ahead here and added in one of those suitcase modules for our uh, 8DI uh, DO uh, arrangement. The one I particularly one I picked here is if I come over here and open up for version 1.1 IODD files under Serious Act. You see we have several different modules that will connect up to IO Link. The two that I showed in the earlier vid video are right here. This one is for the base mounting in the enclosures and this top one is for front panel mounting. So in this case I grabbed the one for front panel mounting and dropped it over here into port number one. Now when I did that it also adds now the device under the tree of the master here on the left hand side. So if I come over here and click on the module here in that tree in the center window the information is now directed towards the device specific information. So if I come on the parameter tab and scroll down this is where I'm going to assign the eight I.O. signals as to whether or not they're input or output in nature. So if I look here and I have input output zero, I've assigned that now to a static input and I do that if you click on that field and have a pull down there's several choices here and I've made that a static input field and I've gone ahead and did that for the four, first four signals. So I have an input, an input, an input, and an input. And then starting at bit four, I did output, 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 and then output. So I've configured this communication module for IOLink to have four input signals and four output signals for this example. So now that was really only parameters I had to set for the, for the actual device itself. If I come back up here to the master, again, I was looking at the port configuration. If I come over here on this second tab for addresses and click on show all PLC addresses and show all ports, this gives you some detailed information about the signals, both input and output and status signals that are available via IO link. And not only the signal name, but what actual PLC address it is specifically assigned to. So you don't have to open up a manual or anything to say, okay, I want to look at the four input signals. They're going to be starting at input 1.0 and going to input 1.3. And on my output signals, those first four are going to be output 0.0, .0 going to output 0.3. So, I know the addresses, but at this point, if I wanted to create PLC tags, I'd be manually creating those tags and then assigning these known addresses to them. We've actually taken it a step uh, further, and we can actually at this point create a UDT for these signals. So I'm going to come in here and create a UDT. I'll put it on my folder called, say, Main Documents, and I'm going to say this is my signals for for panel one and again I'm saving this under documents so ahead and, and save that UDT and now what I can do is now exit out of the PCT tool And now I want to bring that UDT file in to help assign tags for my program. So the way I do that is if I come over here to external source files, I want to add a new external source file and we're going to go under my documents folder. And if I scroll down, you'll see here's my panel one UDT. I'm going to open that up. Once I have that inserted, the next step is right click and generate blocks from the source file. And what that does now 
is it creates some data types for me for both the input image and the output image. And these are reusable data types. So you'll find this very powerful if you have multiple panels that have the same functionality. So say in my case, if I look up the input one, I can say I know the specific input signals that are going to be on it, uh, bit 0 through bit 3. So I can come in here because I have multiple panels that all look the same. I could come in here and say, okay, the first uh, bit is always going to be a selector switch for, say, being in auto. The next input is always going to be my stop push button. The next one is always going to be a start push button. And the last one is a reset push button. I have multiple panels around my machine that all have the same uh, configuration. And now if I go in and open up the ones for the output signals, you'll see I can do the same thing on the output signals. So this is going to be in auto lamp. In stop lamp. In run lamp. And Say my reset required lamp. So now I've preset those labels for the UDT and where you'll see this is going to come in handy now is when I come into PLC tags and actually generate the tags for my CPU. I can come in here and create a label for say panel one and I'm gonna make that instead of a bool I'm gonna make that of type input and if you remember rightly that address started at address at address zero and if I open this thing up you'll see all my push button inputs were assigned to the right byte address. So now I want to come and do the same thing for my outputs. So I actually will want to rename this one here, say panel one inputs. And then I'll create a new tag down here called panel one. outputs and again this will be of a data type now of the outputs and it happened to ask start at the right input and output uh, address except now this is going to be instead of inputs this is going to be at outputs and this is going to start you remember it also started at bit zero and if we open these up, you know these are off signed perfectly as well. So again, if I had additional I.O. panels, I could use this UDT over and over again and just keep creating more and more tags within my program to easily organize the bits coming directly from the I.O. link devices. And the next step would be, say, if I wanted to go into a program block and, say, in my main OB, I can now easily go in and sign a contact and now go find that address, panel 1 inputs, 
and say I want that to be actually my say start push button and if I press that start push button I could simply just turn on a light if I wanted to so I would say say my in run lamp so as long as I hold that button my lamp turns on but you can see just that easy I've assigned the configuration for the IO link uh, devices and now been easily able to assign them in my PLC program so again IO link saves you a lot of time in the configuration and wiring of the system out on the machine but it also saves you a tremendous amount of engineering time inside this portal software to program and configure your logic as well I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. Once again, my name's John Burns. I'm an application consultant here at the Electrical Products Group for Siemens. If you need more information on the control products, please visit us at www.usa.siemens.com backslash controls. Thanks for watching. Siemens, ingenuity for life.